November 25th, 2013. South Bend Common Council is now in session. The invocation by Vice President Oliver Davis. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this Thanksgiving holiday season. We ask you to give us wisdom as we make decisions for the city of South Bend. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to President. 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 Mr. Here. President. 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 Mr. President. Thank you. May I have a report from the subcommittee on minutes? <laughs> Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Another one, John? Or just that good? Did you both of them? You did them both at the same time. Now, proceed to special business 1374. <coughs> 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 Council, we have a very special guest here with us this evening. Um, uh, Mr. Charles Butler uh, went above and beyond um, the, in his um, acts of bravery um, in passing a burning building. Uh, was it on your way to work? Yeah, I was on the way to go get some so um, we we invited Mr. Butler here tonight because I think we're all humbled um, and uh, just so um, thankful to have uh, neighbors such as Mr. Butler. So for Mr. Butler's um, unbelievable act of courage, I would like to present to you um, a resolution honoring Mr. Butler on behalf of the Council, the City of South Bend, and our heroic um, South Bend Fire Department men and women. So um, I present to you a resolution of the Common Council of the City of South Bend uh, of Indiana <coughs> honoring Mr. Charles Butler for his acts of heroism in rescuing a person from the enemy of fire and smoke. And sorry to interrupt. If I may say, this gentleman that um, Mr. Butler saved um, would not have survived if it weren't for Mr. Butler's actions. Mm -hmm. And um, the gentleman's name is Mr. Denny, and he is doing well and recovering in um, a rehabilitation home. So, whereas the South Bend Common Council notes that since March 28, 1831, the date when the original plat of the town of South Bend was recorded, 
that there have been countless acts of unsung heroism by residents and non-residents who have helped shape South Bend's proud history. And whereas the very fabric of our diverse community is based on persons who are selfless in their daily actions and who do the right thing, especially in times of adversity, and whereas the South Bend County <coughs> Council is proud to honor and commend a resident of our neighboring city of Mishawaka, Mr. Charles Butler, who truly has become a local hero, and whereas the Common Council notes that around midnight on October 15, 2013, smoke and flames were engulfing a home located at 1628 South Lear Street in the city of South Bend. And whereas Charles Butler just happened to be passing the home and upon seeing the burning structure took immediate action to rescue an elderly resident from the home before South Bend Fire Department firefighters arrived. Whereas Charles Butler made this rescue without any protect protective fire gear and was miraculously able to rescue the resident with neither sustaining any serious personal injuries. Now, Therefore, be it resolved by the Common Council of the City of South Bend of Indiana as follows. Section 1. On behalf of the citizens of South Bend, <coughs> Indiana, the Common Council is pleased to publicly commend, honor, and congratulate Mr. Charles Butler from the City of Mishawaka for his selfless act of hero heroism in rescuing a resident of South Bend from his burning home on October 15, 2013. Section 2. The Common Council sincerely thanks Charles Butler for his split-second split decision to accept the risk and quietly without fanfare to save a person's life before the screaming sirens uh, sounded for which all of us are forever grateful. Section 3. This resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after its adoption by the Council and approval by the Mayor. And if, if I may um, offer um, a round of mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Butler. Would you like to? Yeah, I appreciate everything. And like I said, I, I didn't really do it as a hero thing. I just, you know, just glad to see his life. And hopefully that happened for me or my family someday, you know. Thank you. you see something burning, just, I didn't thank you, but I just, Ran at it, you know, just tried to help him out the best I could. And yeah. Called 911, and they were there real quick, so thank God for that. Because I didn't know what to do after that. I was like, oh, help, you know, help me now. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. thanks, you know, thanks for everything. And like I said, I'd just like to meet the gentleman at least, you know, say hi to him. You know, he's in better condition. Uh -huh. or whatever. So, that's Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chief. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, Stephen Cox, Fire Chief, South Bend Fire Department, 1222 <laughs> Street. Uh, on behalf of the South Bend Fire Department, I'd also like to commend Mr. Butler for his selfless actions. Uh, yeah. Oftentimes, this day and age, we hear about people uh, not acting or standing by, watching things go down, um, and that was not the case in this situation. Uh, this gentleman <laughs> saw a life-threatening situation, didn't think twice about his own yeah. personal safety, just jumped in, and because of that, a gentleman uh, is alive today, so I'd like to commend Mr. Bowler. Thank you. All right. All right, thank you. Anyone else like to speak in favor of it? No one in opposition? Council members? Well, if we adopt this by acclamation. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. 
Councilmember Henry Davis Jr. Thank you, Council Member uh, President Derek Dieter uh, and Council Members. I have before you, obviously, the, the cheerleading uh, squad that has won. The region is on their way nationally. And as I've uh, always advocated uh, and always said before in the past, I think that we do a really, really poor job of saluting our kids that do a very, very good job. And we do a, a phenomenal job of talking about the, the folks that do things that are, you know, adverse to a positive growth in this community. So any time we get an opportunity to talk, about how good our kids are and what they're doing in a situation, especially this young man coming up here right now because he's really trying to get it in. <laughs> uh, to make sure that we are actually, you know, applauding them and supporting them in a positive way, you know, positive reinforcement always helps out. Um, before again, before you, is a resolution of the Common Council to see South Bend. Mr. Voyer already tell, and so here we go. Whereas the city, the South Bend Common Council knows that the Pop Warner Spirit Program has provided an opportunity since the 1970s for over 180,000 children to participate in Pop Warner cheerleading and dance around the world. Where new friendships are made and characters developed while having fun and fun filled days with cheerleading, <coughs> with cheerleading and dance. And whereas the Pop Warner Spirit Program provides an organized, supervised, and safety oriented program which stresses the values of competition of maintaining at least a 2.0 grade point average and encouraging each participant to give their best efforts while developing their skills and talents. And whereas Michiana Pop Warner was established in 2006 and is a part of the Mid American Region Pop Warner, which is, includes 12 states and more than 300 cheer and dance teams. The Pop Warner Junior Pee Wee. Chilean Squad won first place on Sunday, November 10, 2013 at the Regional Cheer and Dance Championship at Northern Illinois University, making him the first team from this area to win at this level. So I applaud them for that. <laughs> well, I the Junior Pee Wee Chilean Squad will now compete at the National Cheer and Dance <laughs> Championship in Kissimmee. Did I say that right? Kissimmee. Kissimmee. All right. At the Florida, at Kissimmee, Florida, at ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex on December 7th through December 14th, and will proudly represent our part of the state of Indiana. Mm -hmm. And we'll ask the South Bend Common Council proudly recognizes all of the Junior Pee Wee Chilean squad members and their coaches for the many hours of practice and fun which they have had at the West Haven Park located behind Coquilla School as they now prepare for nationals. That's the second district. Now, therefore, we resolve by the Common Council of the City of South Bay, Indiana as follows, Section 1. On behalf of the citizens of the City of South Bay, Indiana, the Common Council is honored to publicly commend and congratulate the student athletes, coaches, and supporters of the 2013 Michiana Pop Warner Junior Pee Wee Children's Squad for the first for coming in first at the Regional Cheer and Dance Championships held at Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, Illinois. Section 2, the Common Council thanks all the parents, friends, and coaches of the Michigan and Paul Warren Junior Pee Wee Children Squad for their support, guidance, and leadership. And on behalf of the residents of the City of South Bay, we wish you continued success as you compete and proudly represent us in the National Cheer and Dance Championship in Florida. Section 3, this resolution shall be in full force and in effect from an after its adoption by the Common Council of the Mayor. Kathy, thank you so much for preparing this for us. Uh, council members, uh, I would like for you to uh, vote this in with full acclamation. But before we go any further, I would like the President of Pop Warner or, I'm sorry, another President. Chair Quarter of the Pop Warner Cheer, uh, cheer Dance Team to speak. <laughs> Hello, my name is Anjanette Dantzler, and I'm the cheer coordinator of um, Michiana Pop Warner. And this is, uh, and I'm also the assistant, one of the assistant coaches for this particular squad. Um, these girls have worked tirelessly since August 1st um, to finally come into first place, kind of going into a, a, a world that we never knew, um, and to actually come out on top and go to first place and go to national. So we're extremely proud of them. Um, they've also. Um, even though it is a 2.0 average, these girls are actually high B A students. Um, all of our girls um, have maintained that throughout the season. Um, so again, extremely proud of um, their efforts. And also with my coaches, um, they're there every week, every game, whether it's, it's cold, warm, whatever it is. So we've done a, a, a great job with the girls, and I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. 
We're also, as we're moving on to go to Disney World, um, we're still in need of funds to get there. So um, they're working, although their season is almost over, we're still working tirelessly to raise money to get the girls to Disney World. So our journey is not quite over. So we're also asking that plea for the council and the city of South Bend to support us as we go forward, um, even financially. We're extremely um, happy to get this resolution, um, and uh, hopefully that you guys will be rooting us on as we go forward. So thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you. Anyone like to speak in favor of this? I would just like to say as a uh, public. Oh, sorry. Thank public, you, uh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I'm sorry. Anyone in opposition? <laughs> no, comments from the council? Yes, it's always exciting to see um, people to invest in our young people. As a father of daughters, it's really nice to see us take time and really nurture our daughters at a very young age, as you all are doing and see them have this um, excellence at such a young age where they can experience not only on a local level but on a national level. So uh, we wish you the best and um, it's very exciting to see. Any other comments from council? President. Mm -hmm. I, I would like, go ahead. What did you finish? Okay. I don't want to miss out, but what did you finish? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would like to thank, thank the young ladies and if you could, Councilman Davis, would you be able to have them Introduce themselves. That's what I was getting ready to ask you. Okay. Mm -hmm. we Before we do that, I'd like to thank the, the ladies that are yeah. they're out there working with them daily. I know how that goes because mm -hmm. I've had several mm -hmm. kids that I have coached. My kids played in Pop Warner, and I appreciate all the work that you guys are doing. And girls, good luck. We'll see yeah. you here in a month or so with the first place trophy. All right. How's your name? Step right up there. Orion. Dantzler. Okay. All right. That's my daughter. Okay. <laughs> right on. Lily Thorns Bay. Okay. Brooklyn Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jada Boyd. Yeah. Anita Underwood. Okay. Maya Francis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla Nagno. Amani Clay. Um, I'm a student demonstrator from Washington High School, so. I come over and help them on the days that I don't have practice for my own cheer team. Um, I'm Jay Shabal. Oh. Hi, I am assistant coach uh, Lamila Booker, and I've been with these girls for the past four years. Great. Mm -hmm. My name is Rika Clay. I'm a, a assistant coach slash mom, just helping out <laughs> here wherever they need me. So I'm just helping out. This is our first year, and we're very excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my name is Arnes Lee. I am the president of Michiana Pop Warner, and I've been involved with Pop Warner for a very long time. I was there when Dieter was there. My son came to the program. He's now playing varsity football at Washington High School, and I have a son that is playing now. So it's a very good program, and the main thing is that we plug academics. The students have to be academically oriented in order to play. So we are extremely proud of this group of young ladies, as well as the coaches. They've done an excellent job. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. Motion. Would we adopt this by acclamation? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> 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 Ready? Do we have to cheer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you! You know the story? Tell the whole wide world this is what I can't say. Hey, you! You know the story?
Chief of Staff, Catherine Roos, Board of City Offices, Mayor B. Good evening, members of the Council. Thank you for the opportunity for a uh, monthly report to City Offices to uh, update and address the Council on recent issues and opportunities in our city and our administration. Uh, first of all, just uh, want to take the opportunity, since this is the first time I believe I've had uh, a chance in this chamber since the passage of the budget, to thank the council for uh, the hard work that went into that and congratulate the council on uh, what I believe is a very positive outcome for the city. We look forward to working together, uh, structuring the use of funds for a number of the important priorities that we discussed during uh, that budget process, everything from street lights and curbs and sidewalks to police patrols. Uh, and we're also uh, glad to be uh, getting underway on the effort to introduce uh, a new program for smart streets in the downtown area and throughout the city. Um, one topic that was of uh, great interest at the, the last uh, report to city offices, so I just wanted to provide a little bit of information on that, uh, is our tally of job creation uh, so far for South Bend, particularly jobs that have actually been delivered in projects or efforts that have been related to the activities of our community investment department. Uh, so far this year, we've tracked 344 jobs created uh, across 24 new businesses, including Hubble Rayco, major manufacturer of steel boxes and covers, uh -huh. uh, Liebermuth, which is a supplier of essential oils, fragrances, flavors, and herbs, and botanicals, uh, FQ, which has technology that uh, permits a direct identification of genetic materials uh, within uh, a matter of minutes, uh, and, uh, of course, Noble Americas, uh, which uh, has... Uh, position itself to get our uh, ethanol, ethanol plant back online in short order. That brings, according to the Department of Workforce Development, our unemployment rate down substantially, but certainly higher than we would like it to be, uh, higher than the state of Indiana and higher than the national average. So we continue to have our work cut out for us, uh, but uh, we are encouraged by the activity that's happened throughout the city. Uh, moving to downtown, uh, we've seen about $2 million of new private investment uh, just in, in a matter of weeks as uh, both existing space has been renovated and, and new construction has <coughs> taken place. Uh, just to mention a couple uh, ribbon cuttings in the uh, near northwest uh, just in the last couple weeks, uh, South Bend Drum Company on Portage and uh, Jeans Camera Store's expansion of their studio space on uh, Lincoln Way West, certainly very encouraging in areas that we'd like to see more investment in. Uh, downtown itself, everything from a sushi restaurant to a rug store, I want to note that we're continuing the uh, uh, popular pop-up shops program for the holidays. This year, the site for that will be the Center City Place on South Michigan Street. Uh, new downtown housing, uh, about 70 units downtown that we've been able to announce. Five development groups with plans to spend approximately $40 million, uh, bringing uh, as many as 250 additional living spaces into the city center. Uh, Great Lakes Capitals announced $9 million of investment, uh, matching $1.8 in public money for the LaSalle Hotel. And uh, we have uh, uh, seen this development largely track what we have been hoping to see based on the uh, recent uh, study commissioned by the Redevelopment Commission. Uh, many of you may have had a chance to be exposed to that on the potential future capacity for downtown housing. It suggests that the market could likely support uh, 485 to 670 additional housing units over the next five years and perhaps an additional 1,000 to 1,500 over the next 10. 
Uh, a smaller note, just uh, right in the neighborhood of this building, if you haven't had a chance to see it, the uh, Studebaker Plaza has opened on the site of the old Studebaker Blacksmith Shop at Jefferson in Michigan, uh, and is another nice uh, public space for us. Uh, I want to draw your attention to a presentation that will happen later tonight on the importance of addressing uh, the combined sewer overflow project and long-term control plan. Uh, it's going to require fiscal responsibility, tough choices, and uh, decisions that will uh, do what needs to be done with rates in the near term to prevent saddling residents with much higher rates in the far term. Uh, I think for all of us in elected office it will uh, be something of a test of political courage but also an opportunity to do the right thing for the long run and uh, my colleagues will have an opportunity to present more of the financial uh, and engineering perspective in detail on that matter. Uh, as part of the long-term control plan we had opportunity to open Diamond Avenue which I know is very uh, exciting for the neighbors who were there, uh, not only taking care of that 90-inch pipe that need to happen underground, uh, but also a welcome investment in the curb sidewalks and lighting uh, on that part of the west side, uh, which uh, the neighbors very much appreciated. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to work in order to make sure that we both have less untreated water going into the river in South Bend. Uh, as well as to make sure that water is not accumulating in people's basements in our city. Uh, also just wanted to uh, provide uh, a quick update to uh, the Council on a matter that we've discussed a lot and uh, continue to be on track for, which is uh, negotiating a public-private partnership addressing the management of the Potawatomi Zoo, uh, something that uh, we discussed during the course of the budget process. We feel those discussions continue to be on track and uh, continue to anticipate that we'll be ready to present a final plan uh, for uh, approval by the council before the end of this year. Uh, I believe I'll uh, stop there and, and uh, see if there are any questions or uh, new items that council members would like to bring up. All right, thank you. We'll begin with council member Henry Davis, Jr. Each council member will have about three minutes of questions or comments. Thank you, Mayor, for addressing this, and thank you for showing up. Um, one thing I want to try to encourage you to is if you can find time in your schedule uh, when we are having our cell community meetings that you probably should want to show. I think that you could have delivered uh, a necessary piece of a conversation to us this afternoon as we were discussing this, uh, the, the water rate increase sewer uh, situation. And I, I just think that it'll probably be, you know, uh, good to have you there so we can have those discussions with you rather than, you know, these quick conversations that we have sometimes with you uh, when you uh, present to us. Um, when you were talking about the 344 new jobs, and I've you know, obviously stuck to this point uh, on a regular basis about uh, unemployment rate, um, how do you guys or how are you guys qualifying these jobs as, uh, I guess, new growth jobs? Um, when we're looking at a tax abatement and we, people come in for tax abatements, they're, they're outlining a number of jobs that they're going to have over the course of several years versus right now great jobs. So are you adding all those into this 344, or uh, how, how are you coming up with this number? Yeah, great question. Uh, one thing that often happens in the context of economic development is that uh, an estimate is offered of jobs that are going to be created over the life of a project. Uh, that number is certainly important to us, but the most important number to me is the number of jobs that have actually been created where somebody is working even as we speak. And uh, so uh, for that 344 count, uh, we focus on jobs delivered already. Uh, all of those projects, or many of those projects, we anticipate will yield more jobs in the future, but uh, we don't want to count them before they patch, so to speak. So are there a mixture of part-time, full-time, temporary? Uh, I'm referring to DCI for details on that, but I believe uh, for a job to be counted there, you'd be looking at a full-time equivalent. So either a full-time job or, uh, or a full-time equivalent in terms of hours. Okay. Um, you did mention that we're still above the state level and also the national. Uh, what is our number right now as far as being on the... On the uh, according to the Department of Workforce Development, the number right now stands at 9.9% uh, for South Bend. Okay. So we're still around um, 10%. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to bring your attention to, and this has been something that's been talked about for some time now, <coughs> we're talking about public and private partnerships. Uh, obviously, you believe in these things. You, uh, you work with uh, a couple of great lakes development on a number of projects. Um, this council, um, last year, a year before last, passed a resolution stating that when we do public and private partnerships, we would like to see the same activity on each individual one, and none of them uh, being unique in their own form. Uh, but making sure that we follow the same program so that no one feels like they're being left out or there was some sort of like uh, 
criticism that was being put in play when it comes to public and private partnerships. I want to make you aware of that document. I'm right now, I'm searching, looking for the document so I can obviously send to your office. And it's all because of what took place when we were dealing with the Chase Tower situation. So I want to make sure that we recognize that. And also, also recognize the fact that when we're using public dollars, that we need to make sure that we are including the public benefit clause. I think that those conversations need to happen at a higher level and have it at a level that makes sense for the residents of South Bend when we're talking about subsidizing uh, projects for folks that um, ordinarily probably would invest anyway, but making sure that the people of the city of South Bend, the taxpayers, are getting a, uh, a, a, some sort of like benefit from the monies that are being delivered. I think that it, it doesn't serve us well to allow dollars to be given out uh, in a form of a subsidy or a welfare grant or, or a private-private partnership, because they're all the same, but making sure that folks are getting their just due, meaning the taxpayers back from it. And so, so I'm just looking forward to conversations later on uh, and making sure that we do get a better agreement with public and private partnerships as it relates to public benefits. Okay, Valerie Shea. Um, thank you, President Dieter. Um, Mayor, the majority of my questions tonight have to do with the uh, combined sewer overflow project, and um, fortunately, um, uh, many of those were addressed earlier, and I know Director Horvath and Controller Neal are here, so I will defer to that time. Thank you. Mr. Furley, Dr. Uh, Furley, <laughs> Fred Furley. Mayor, I don't question your expertise, but as far as the CSO project is concerned, I prefer to have Eric Horvath, uh, Mark Neal, and John Murphy answer the questions. Thank you. Dr. Vice President, thank you. As you, come as you come Oliver Davis. As you come to the end of this year, um, what do you think has been um, um, one of the accomplishments between the council and the administration that you are most proud of? Because this will be your last time um, presenting to us this year in this forum because we only have one meeting next month. So what do you think in looking at all working together? What, what stands out for you? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to reflect on that. I think it's, it's been an eventful year and, and it's been a very productive year. And I think the uh, budget process uh, would be certainly one thing that, that reflects that. I think we had an opportunity uh, through uh, the council speaking for uh, a number of different uh, uh, groups and, and individuals uh, uh, around neighborhoods and around the city to uh, elevate the priority of a number of things that are important to the city, uh, whether that was uh, citywide priorities uh, like uh, issues around safety, uh, lighting, curbs and sidewalks, uh, or uh, something that uh, I know uh, representing your district you've been very passionate about, for example, uh, which has been making sure that uh, the issues uh, related to the closure of new energy and the need to keep uh, water out of those folks' basements uh, was being addressed. I think that uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, after two years serving together, we're all uh, learning more and more uh, what to expect from one another, how to listen to one another, uh, and uh, uh, how to work productively. And I look forward to that uh, relationship continuing to grow stronger each passing year. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Furley. Mm -hmm. Councilmember White. No questions. See, we have three. I don't have any questions. We have about three more minutes left in the segment for any other questions. Councilman Davis, did you have a follow -up? Sure, just real quick. Um, because it was such a hiccup a couple of years ago, I was wondering what is the progression of the uh, federal court case of defining the tape, tape situation as public, you know, obviously wiretapping the whole nine. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything about it lately because we did regular updates from some of our attorneys. However, it's kind of calmed down. Uh, but it still exists out there because it's like that big white elephant in the room no one wants to talk about. So I, I wanted to find out if you had any new information uh, to share with us. I have to refer you to the legal uh, department on that. All right, thank you very much. Adam, may I have a motion to resolve in the committee? So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? You'd like to say there? I'm going to ask the Council President if I can remain in my seat. No. Um, um, yes, you may. Well, thank you. Uh, well, we'll think about it. Yes, thank you may. Uh, the Committee of the Whole is now in session. This is the portion of the Council's meeting where bills are given a second reading and a public hearing. At this time, I would ask um, City Clerk John Vordy to please give second reading to Bill 64-64. 13, please. Okay. <coughs> 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 
Is there a committee report? There is, Madam Chair, and the um, committee sent the bill to the full council with uh, no recommendation. Thank you. At this time, we will ask the presenter, the presenters, to come to the podium to pl please state your name and address and to give us a summary of Bill 64-13. For the public that is present, I would like to make mention that we've had a number of meetings in which we've asked for public input regarding Bill 64-13. Thank you, Councilmember White. Eric Corva, Public Works Director, 13th floor of this building. Um, and as you had indicated, we have had a number of uh, meetings here. Um, I would like to go over some detail again. Um, and I'll try to be a little more brief just so that uh, folks that haven't been part of those meetings uh, understand what we're talking about. Here's a beautiful picture of the city and we're finally realizing that the river that flows through the middle of the city um, is really just a tremendous resource for us. That it's an asset that we have to count on. Um, in a way it's always been an asset for the city but 100 years ago it was an asset in the way that it was basically a sewer pipe that uh, took the sewage away from our streets and, and out of the city and uh, and over time um, we <coughs> and, and built a treatment plant and started intercepting some of those sewers and taking them off the river um, but it's still an issue today and it's something that we feel we need to protect and uh, and continue to try to make sure that uh, uh, we're treating this as the as a asset that it is in terms of economic development for us as well as um, just the residential development you've seen occurring downtown along the river. Um, so here's our motivation. Uh, I mentioned before that uh, there are 4,000 deaths each day for waterborne illnesses. Uh, that's the city population, uh, uh, South Bend's population in less than a month um, dies due to waterborne illnesses. And so it's something that we can take for granted from time to time uh, because we're very blessed with uh, having technology and systems in place that we are uh, protecting human health in the environment as much as possible. However, having said that, um, I think a lot of people when I talk to them are amazed to understand that we still have 60 to 70 times each year, on a typical year, that we've got these sewer overflows that go into the river. Um, and so our system is got 36 different places in, in the city where these overflows occur and uh, as much as a billion gallons of sewage into the river uh, each year, which is a tremendous amount of uh, untreated sewage. <clears throat> Here's another part of our motivation. Um, we have a number of homes in the area that when these uh, sewers surcharge, they backflow into basements. And um, we recently did a survey of some areas that uh, we knew we had problems in, and we, we surveyed 376 homes. And, 225 of those homes um, at least had one time a year that they had sewage uh, backing up in their basement uh, in the survey and, and many of those multiple times a year. Um, so this is, this is part of why we're going to talk about the long-term control plan and, and what the next steps are for us. Um, to give you an idea of what briefly the sewer overflow looks like, um, the image to the left is under normal dry weather conditions. Um, the pipes are big enough to handle all of the flow that comes to them and, uh, and those all go to the treatment plant, the water gets treated and then discharged to the river in a clean state according to our NPDES permit um, that we have. In wet weather, however, uh, we get a rain event and this is the 60 to 70 times a year that this happens. Um, the sewer surcharges so it can't handle all the flow. It backs up and then it spills over a dam or a weir and then flows into the um, river. And the reason we don't dam that up entirely is because if it didn't overflow into the river, it would all overflow into people's basement and on the streets and other, other places that we'd have uh, serious human health issues. So here's our system. Those red dots are the 36 uh, combined sewer overflows in the city. Uh, city limits is 40 square miles and half of our city limits is still on a combined sewer system. Development of this plan goes back to 1989. Uh, South Bend started studying uh, their CSO system as far back as then and, and really started in earnest looking at their long-term control plan in 2002. Uh, they were working with um, 
EPA and DOJ came in and put a lot of pressure on municipalities, uh, <coughs> actually everyone in the state, uh, to get these long-term control plans done and developed. Um, in 2008, they started uh, their technical plan and were negotiating level of control with EPA and Department of Justice. And then in 2011, the end of 2011, signed a consent decree on their long-term control plan. So here's what our plan looks like in comparison to other plans. Uh, about $40,000 on a cost per acre basis. Um, and we've talked about this before, but because uh, our population is small and we've got such a large combined area, our cost per capita is very high. It's an issue that uh, we're unfortunate to have, but uh, an issue that nevertheless uh, we need to take responsibility for and address. So our plan basically requires us to develop, um, to eliminate these wet weather overflows um, at all times except for four times during uh, a typical year. Um, we can never have dry weather overflows. And when we do have wet weather overflows, we've got to disinfect. Uh, so we have to have some means of disinfection on the uh, nine remaining overflow points that we'll have during those four occurrences <laughs> a year. So it'll be significantly less um, than what we have today. Uh, some may ask, well, why not just eliminate them all? Um, that was part of the alternatives analysis that they looked at, and they looked at a number of different plans to try to get the cost down and, and do a cost-benefit analysis. And um, to eliminate them all was, I believe, over a billion dollar uh, issue, and you'd have half of the city torn up um, just separating sewers or building huge uh, tanks to store it. Um, we have talked about this as well. We do have uh, some reopeners built into the plan, um, and this is something that uh, we're serious about is uh, reopening the plan. It's very difficult to have a 20-year plan and not to expect there to be changes in it. So we know that there are going to be things that we can do with green infrastructure and with technology that we can make improvements um, on the plan. And so uh, we will continue to relook at the plan and find uh, better ways to implement this and hopefully uh, save some money in the process. So he, next five years, um, here's what we're looking at uh, in terms of requirements in our consent decree. Um, by December 31st of 2017, we need to have completed all of the phase one collection system controls. So the phase one stuff that we've been talking about in separating sewers um, and, and trying to keep uh, sewage out of basements, um, according to the consent decree, needs to be done by December 31st of 2017. These are all controls um, uh, or projects that we, we need to have um, not only in process but, but completed. Phase two controls upstream of the East Race. Uh, we've got to start by March 1 of 2014. And phase two storage tank at Leaper Park, we've got to have started by March 1 of 2017. So over the next number of years, those are the uh, key spots in the consent decree that um, we have to meet. Otherwise, um, we'll have stipulated penalties associated with not meeting those. So here's our plan for what we're going to what we're proposing to do in the next steps, number one is get the sewage out of the basements. And it's a number of sewer separation projects that we need to do in various parts of, the, of our community, addressing those 225 homes that we looked at in the surveys and getting that, uh, getting that sewage out of there and, and reducing, as such, the, the overall amount of flow that's going to be going to the system, reducing the overflows to the to the river and, uh, and trying to keep as much of this as we can going to the treatment plant. We know that we're going to have more flow coming to the treatment plant and our consent decree requires us to uh, change our treatment plant to meet a peak flow of 100 million gallons a day. Right now we can uh, meet a peak of 77 million gallons a day. And so that is also part of the first phase of projects that we need to do and that we're starting to move forward on. And, and these would be, all, all these projects would be ones that we're looking at doing uh, in this time frame that we're talking about for rates in 2014 to 2017. So looking at the, um, we recently updated our facility plan for the treatment plant and uh, have a plan moving forward on how do we get to 100 million gallon per day plant facility. These are the phase one plans, uh, uh, projects. Um, you see East Bank, part of that's been done. We still have to do East Bank 5. And Avenue's been done. We've got uh, 
Alder Plow, some work to do there, go ahead, Kensington, uh, and then the sewer separation projects that we talked about, uh, as well as Southwood needs to be done as well, which is sewer separation. And wastewater treatment plant upgrades I discussed. So next steps uh, are also at the same time that we're moving forward with the phase one, which is uh, we talked about getting the sewage out of the basements and, and upgrades to the treatment plant. We know we've got these other projects that are huge projects that are $40 million dollar tanks. Uh, they're large interceptor pro um, interceptors that we have to build. And um, we're saying before we do that, let's get smart and make sure that we've got the right data so that we recalibrate the model based on the MNET system that we have in place and these hundreds of monitors that we've got in our system, we now have better data than we ever have because we're reading the flow and level of, of sewers every five minutes. And so we can tell at certain rain events, we've got nine different rain gauges throughout the city, um, we can tell what that flow should be. And so that will help us zone in on how much flow we really need to control so that we don't build a tank that's extra large in hopes that we're, we're going to capture it all and spend $40 million on a tank that we only need to spend $30 million on. So the next phase this coming year will be recalibrating the model, make sure we know what types of flows we really need to capture, and then looking at what is the best solution based on that. So are there green uh, infrastructure solutions that we can put in place that will take some of that flow off of the system, maybe provide a community benefit, and allow us to make a much smaller tank and a much smaller interceptor sewer. Um, and so that'll be the next uh, the next phase that we'll do uh, before we jump into phase two projects. Is there remaining capital costs? We've talked about this. Um, we're fighting inflation as we move forward, and uh, so it's something that we want to keep in mind that um, construction costs haven't gone down; they continue to rise. So uh, we we need to pursue this pretty aggressively in trying to get some of these projects done sooner rather than later. This is the cost of living index that we shared before just to show that uh, we're currently very, very competitive in terms of utility rates um, as a whole in, in South Bend. And this is something that's important for us to stay competitive. And that's, I think, everyone's fear is that we don't want to get to the point where we're no longer competitive and nobody wants to develop here because it's just not a good place to develop. Um, so from an economic development standpoint, this is something that you know, we need to continue to look at, is how do we keep that uh, utility cost of living index down. Here's a quick comparison uh, of where we currently are. Um, you can see these are all of the cities and towns populations over 25,000 in the state of Indiana. Uh, South Bend's uh, combined rate is $55 per month, um, based on, I think that one's on 7 CCF. And um, we've got about 22 of the communities that are uh, higher than us and about 13 that are lower. And we're you know, roughly in that middle of the pack for, for rates right now. So here's our goal for the rate increase is to keep something that uh, over the next four years um, is fairly consistent in terms of uh, average dollar amount per year increase. Um, and so we're looking at 9% per year that uh, will help us meet these regulatory requirements we have and meet the, um, the stipulated dates that we have in the consent decree um, and stay financially sound. Um, I think that in addition to meeting regulatory requirements, we've <coughs> said that we believe this is the right thing to do. Um, this is, you know, tough choices. Nobody wants to see rates go up and, and I hear that loud and clearly. Um, uh, but I think tough choices now mean lower rates later. And I think if you look at the, the numbers, it'll, it'll show that. And so. Um, you know, I think it takes some courage and we need to uh, step up and, and increase the rates to meet the needs of, of not only um, this consent decree, but really of, of our rate payers who are having um, sewage back up in their basement and, and trying to meet environmental um, health of the rivers uh, and keep this uh, as an asset for us. And uh, so I think, you know, punting this means putting the burden on future generations and so that's why we're looking at trying to move this plan forward aggressively now. Here's where we'd be uh, in the next four years, uh, given uh, the rate increases that we've proposed. Um, and this is showing us in relation to all other communities above 25,000 and where they currently are. And so this is um, assuming that none of these 
uh, individuals had rate increases other than South Bend, Indiana. And we know already Evansville census data um, just implemented 32 percent for next year, 8 percent for the following, and 18 percent for the year after that. Um, and many others are looking at them right now as well. So I think um, I'll probably just wrap up. I don't think I have anything else. I think I've covered all this. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Uh, and I've also um, got Jennifer Wilson here with me as well. Uh, with Kohorlot, who has uh, done a rate analysis. And if there are any detailed questions on the rates or how we came to those, uh, she'd be happy to answer them as well. I'm going to go down the road and ask council members if you have any questions pertaining to Bill 64-13. Comments that you would like to make in general can be made after the public uh, hearing. At this time, Council Member Furlick. Councilman Oliver Davis. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Oliver, for your presentation. Um, in your phases, could you please, um, there's a couple of questions I have, um, Councilmember White. Um, could you please um, share with us some more detail regarding your short and long-term plan that's in place to widen and to increase users um, that are currently on our system? As we talked this afternoon, if we are very serious about doing this as and in increasing our user's capacity that would help us in terms of the cost of our rates. So that's my first question. And um, I have two others after that, but I'll start you with that question. What's your short and long-term plan sure. for widening um, our users? Yeah, um, we all understand that uh, sewers are a human health issue, and we've got a number of areas in our county um, and a couple areas in the city currently don't have sewers that have septic systems and um, a number of them would like to have sewers it's just a matter of finding a way a, a mechanism to get them there um, without putting that burden uh, on the ratepayers um, and it's very difficult um, depending on where they are for them to make it work financially to get the sewers out there but we've got a, a model in place now that seems to be working in our regional sewer district um, that uh, has been formed that now can uh, help set their own rates um, and be a bulk uh, discharge to us just like any of our large users would be like Iron Tech, Iron Code, or Memorial. Um, so the structure would be that they would take a group of homes uh, in the county and um, attach those to our sewer system and then start paying sewer rates pro uh, accordingly. Uh, Thank you. Um, can you send us some more detail regarding that structure that you have in place so we can take the time to look over it? Um, because I think that's going to be really important as we look at the issues. Um, another issue you talked about on reopening. Um, what is in place now um, regarding uh, um, you or our attorney, I see as president, our corporate counsel. Um, what is going on right now in our legal department, uh, along with our public works area, that is looking at um, reopening the case? Um, as soon as possible. What kind of conversations are you having with our corporate um, attorney so we can move forward with that third realm? Because other cities have looked at or reopening it. And um, what um, currently are you doing in terms of um, meeting with our corporate attorney to outline a legal strategy so we can do this uh, sooner rather than later? Yeah. Um to answer that question, you know, part of it I've answered already in, in the presentation that the first step, and I, and I didn't say this, but the first step really is looking at the model and is there a better way to do it, right? Um, because based on that answer, it'll determine how we move forward legally with the EPA and Department of Justice um, with this consent decree. It is a legal decree, right? So, um, you know, to a certain degree, if we don't move forward with the plan, we could be held in contempt. Um, we are going to continue to move forward to the plan, but we're going to look at different ways to do it and then try to sit down with them and sell them on uh, better and quicker, right? And, and everyone who's been successful has done just that. They've said, we're going we're to show you a plan that might be less money, but it's going to get you environmental benefits quicker and it's going to get you more environmental better benefits. What chance? And so, so I, I think okay. it's premature for me to say how we'll do that because the first question needs to be answered. 
and, and can't be answered until we look at what those flows are, and we recalibrate the model, okay. and then we redo the plan and say, can we in fact do it for less money and show them that there's a, a benefit to them, to the EPA and DOJ. If we can do that, we can probably get them willing to talk and open up the, uh, the consent decree sooner as opposed to waiting till we've got these uh, reopeners built into the into So you're recalibrating the issues and being able to get those numbers back to us. You're looking at six months, nine months, a year. What are you looking at? Um, I would say probably a year, yeah. And so with, I'm looking at to um, somewhere at the end of 214, 215, um, you can sit down with the legal team and then look over those kind of findings that you have and then make a plan. That's correct. Okay. And uh, um, we talked about it earlier um, in terms of the letter that I wrote to you all. Um, just when do you know that you'll be able to give us a response to that letter? Um, a written response? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, when can, when can we expect to have that? Oh, we could probably do that um, beginning of next week. Okay, thank you. And again, for the public, can you just talk about um, why inflation numbers were not included in the original numbers? Because of the fact that, um, um, to me, a lot of people said, well, weren't in, uh, inflation numbers, when you're looking at a 15, 20-year plan, shouldn't that have already been calculated <coughs> in that kind of a plan? I mean, if you're looking at um, something and, you know, buying something that's on a long-term basis, you think about down the road. And so, um, could um, the... I forgot her name. Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer. Sure. Thank you. Could you share your thoughts regarding that? And um, um, and when you work with other cities um, in consulting them, do you go over inflation cost earlier? Um, well, again, Jennifer Wilson with Crow Horwath. Um, when these numbers were negotiated with the uh, Department of um, DOJ and EPA, it was done on a present value basis. So everything was back down into 2007 numbers and it was a EPA mandated formula on how that calculation was done. So a lot of the items that we talk about is that was the EPA was given to us on how we had calculated and it had to be in those present value numbers and so that's, that's why no inflation factor was in, involved because they wanted to see it in those 2007 numbers. Is that um, standard practice then? When you're consulting with others, yes. cities to have this used to stand, and then you come back later um, to talk about inflationary costs? Well, it, it was mandated whenever you were doing those negotiations that you use that exact same formula. It was the same formula no matter what city that we went to. You had to use that same EPA mandated formula and use present value numbers. When did you have the formula change? Um, the, the formula, you, you were only able to inflate the numbers according to how the EPA lets you inflate the numbers. So at that time, we were using 2007 numbers, and those are the numbers we had to use. I'm talking about now. Have, have they made any changes in the way they do their inflation calculations? Um, we would have to man, would have use the formulas that they would give us in order to do it. I'm sure we would be able to bring it inflated up to this time period, but we would have to redo the numbers according to the mandate of how they tell us how to do it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Councilmember Varna, any questions, statements? Questions that uh, in return uh, to uh, that? I'll put, I'll put yeah. this in the form of a question. Uh, since, as you know, Gary, or Gary Eric is, uh, is, is new <laughs> to this, <laughs> while he's been an engineer for a number of years, um, <clears throat> I think that you probably aren't aware that we raised rates 32% not too many years ago. We raised 25% mm -hmm. another time. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying is I, I'm sure, I, I wonder if you know that. Uh, so we're going to deal with each other. I don't want to talk about a lack of courage. Okay? I, I, I think that 9%, uh, 32%, 25%, ongoing for the last 10 years is an exhibition of, of willingness, if not courage, on the part of the council to go off the project. What I think has happened, <laughs> from my perspective, is that no one on the council ever had a chance to participate in this until the package was brought to us. Mm -hmm. And then we're told that you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. Always with threats. Always with threats. Fines and all of these other things. Um, I think people have to show the courage of the folks who have organized this and put it together and have to find a way to get it done for less. Now, if you're telling me, and, and I, I believe this was all part of the Metro, or the Metro Net, the, uh, the Smart Sewer, um, the MNET program, we're going to recalibrate this in a year, and we're going to see where we are. 
that just seems to me the time to take a big deep breath is right now and say, let's find out where we can make improvements. Let's find out how much we can reduce this. Let's find out what our options are. But having sat through four or five of these over the years, what I know is that there'll be some unknown circumstance in four years when this is up again, which won't allow us to reduce rates. And then in four years, there'll be another deal which won't allow us to reduce rates. I just don't see, everyone seems to be so proud that this is so huge. And I think we ought to be saying, instead of we're proud of it, I think we ought to be saying, how can we afford it? How can the folks out there afford it? And how can we make this workable? I really think that this is where we put the community okay. I don't fault anybody. I think this is a deal that got out of control and no one was going to put their foot down. So, uh, there's no lack of courage here. There's a genuine concern that this could get really out of control. And I, and I hope people will understand that. I hope you appreciate it. And I hope you take it for the sincerity which I offer. Not as a criticism. Yeah, Thank you. Councilman Gator. <coughs> that was good. Uh, just he, Dr. Varner talked about a lot that I wanted to, but I just one question is you said tough choices now, lower rates later, when would later be? Well, I think, you know, what I meant by that is um, if you do a rate sensitivity analysis um, and, you know, assuming <coughs> that there's certain, there are certain projects that have to be done. And, <coughs> you know, I, I understand you're saying let's question those assumptions. And, and part of the plan that, you know, the reason we're moving forward parts of it now are because they are the projects that we're separating sewers and they're the ones that are in the phase one that we have to have done by 2017. And so it makes me nervous if we don't move forward that we're just not going to get there with all the projects. Um, but what happens on the rate sensitivity analysis is if you look at 9% raises over the next four years, that then your subsequent raises to meet the, the needs of the capital needs of the plan are much less than that, and and we, we showed that um, we showed the entire plan to you in the rates, and I, th I think in year 16, year 15, it was one of them was zero, one was one percent, so it went down significantly. Um, if you do it the other way around, we did five percent <coughs> increases for the first half of the plan, we would end up with rates that would be 15 percent, 18 percent at the end. And our total um, monthly rate, our monthly charge, would go from somewhere, you know, with the plan we've got in front of you at $95 a month to somewhere in the realm of $130, $140 per month, depending on how you do it. Um, so the, and, and that's what I meant by that, is that obviously if you raise rates, it's generating capital over 16 years as opposed to if you do it later when it generates it over the last period of the program. Um, yeah, I understand, but that when, when you say something like that, I interpret it, and I don't know if people who are paying that bill interpret it, that you, you're, you're talking about the lower rates will be decreasing throughout the process of the entire project. When people, I think the normal person, lay person, they think lower well, rates of, okay, it's going to be lower than what we're paying now or whatever. So I, again, it's not anything indicative of all the, I think it's just Dr. Varner hit it, it's, we've been going through this for a long time and just, <coughs> this thing has just exploded into something that I think we can do, work harder and get something a lot better for the taxpayers. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Furley? Yeah, and I, the only uh, question I have to ask really is that I think your analogy that's going to cost us more later if we don't come up with it now is based on a $600 million project. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if your project can be cheaper from the outset, you may be better off to slow mm -hmm. it down now mm -hmm. and add on later. So I think it depends on you interpret your numbers, obviously. But I agree with Dave completely. And I have a sense with talking to you about over the last two months about this, that you're willing to work with us for the betterment of the city. And I think that's the way we should go. So I agree with Dr. Varner and commend you for being willing to be open-minded about this whole thing. Councilman Mache. Sure. Eric, I'll just reiterate what I had said in committee uh, earlier today. I think with the, the federal mandate, there aren't any members of council here that would argue we do not want raw sewage okay. running into the river. So we, of course, are going to support you in all your efforts to um, remediate that issue. However, um, what I had mentioned earlier is there's the need to have and then there's the nice to have. 
And one thing that, at least during my time on council, I feel we haven't done, um, we as a city maybe haven't done as good of a job as possible, is separating those costs. There are the need to have, so there's the actual infrastructure that has to be put in place to separate the storm and uh, stormwater and sewage. Um, but then there's the nice to haves, and those are the you know the streets, the, the more elaborate streetscaping improvements that are done on the back of the funding for the CSO project. And I think in the spirit of transparency and accountability, um, we we're being a bit disingenuous when we tell the residents you know it's going to cost this much. Well, the federal mandate portion to eliminate the um, sewer overflows, yes, that's going to cost this much. But the um, the, the more embellished um, streetscape replacements that are going in after the work has been done, that's a nice to have. And so I think in the spirit of transparency and accountability, we would serve the community well by um, providing a more um, detailed analysis of those costs. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Davis. I just have comments. Okay, then we'll come back and get to that section. Um, Council member, um, city council attorney, you would like to make yes. ask a question? Absolutely. Yeah, it's pretty close, but yeah, absolutely. And in particular, the one that I believe it was slightly there was a change between items that have been under much discussion about meeting the Ministry of Water Quality standards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think in light of the discussion, mm -hmm. it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I took that up just because I think um, behind the whole thought was, you know, that that's what was driving it. Um, but there's nothing in the consent decree that says that. So I was just being honest with, with the issue is that it did. It was still in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. You're right. Okay. Clarify that for me. Council member. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Varner. Go back. You, you, there's nothing in the consent decree that requires a, a Michigan, um, um, no, Michigan standard. What, what it requires is that we disinfect each of those overflows when they overflow. That's what it requires. However, the last presentation. Yeah. So the, the the impetus behind that, when they were negotiating with EPA and DOJ, and, and Jack could speak to this, um, was to meet the water quality standard at the Michigan state line. What they did was they did a river uh, model that looked at the water quality impacts on the river, and they turned off all sources except for South Bend CSOs, and they said, um, do the South does the River water quality meet the Michigan standard, the Michigan state line, if South Bend sewers are overflowing into um, into the river at the uh, at the nine different places, the four overflows per year. But in reality, you and can't it didn't, turn off all the other. It didn't meet that. What's that? In reality, you yeah. can't turn off all the other sources. If it rains, that's right. Here, uh, Mishawaka, no that question. model's faulty. And, and if we're using that to spend forty million dollars for a tank, that's we need to argue that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I do. Yeah. I'm. I have enough, uh, enough common sense stuff that you can't use that as a model to lay this on the city of South Bend okay. unless we offered to do that because somebody thought that'd be a neat idea. Mm -hmm. We offered that to the EPA or something like that. I, yeah, I, I that's think, a uh, point that I, I think that we need to have clarify. clarify and also as we continue to move forward, that's the area that additional information is going to be needed. Because, because okay. Council Member White. Which is the uh, mm -hmm. No, because he said that's the impetus behind it, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between what's the impetus behind something and what's written and what's legally documented. And that's what I wanted us to have a better understanding of that, because in, in, the impetus behind something is mm -hmm. somebody's interpretation regarding how we look at life and everything. Is, and um, I know I didn't go to any law school, but I mean, there's a whole different ballgame behind have, that. The, the wording didn't change. We need to disinfect mm -hmm. all of the overflows that we have. Okay, let's be clear about that. Consent decree requires every overflow to be disinfected. Because the the reason study. that they were giving was because it meets, mm -hmm. it needs to meet water quality standards, Michigan State Line. That that hasn't changed. Okay. I'm going to ask our I, I was just attorney to go back and that. pull out those minutes that when we had the discussion about the Michigan and the impact. Yeah. 
And so that's the area that we need to make sure that it's clarified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask our attorney to work with uh, uh, the city attorney and, this, and uh, uh, with Eric to make sure that the language is in line with what, you know, in terms of the consent decree. We're now going to move towards the um, uh, public hearing portion. Is there anyone? Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there anyone uh, present wishing to speak in support of Bill 64-13? Anyone present wishing to speak in support? <coughs> Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? If so, we ask that you come to the podium, state your name and address, please. Who's keeping time? Because Mr. Scott's not here tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask um, um, Councilmember Furlick to keep time. I'll be fair, I'm watching my clock. So you find it, it's five minutes, correct? In this five question. minutes. Kevin is a case. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesse Davis, PO Box 10205 South and 46680. Um, I played in sewers for 23 years in South Bend, Mishawaka, Elkhart, so I know a whole lot about these people's basements that flood them, and I feel real bad for them. But this has been an ongoing problem for centuries, decades, however far back you want to look at it. It's not something that just came up to the city yesterday and they said, hey, here's this decree, you got to do this tomorrow. We went through this with Mayor Lickey's administration. I sat through many city council meetings where sewer rates were raised, as Mr. Varner said. And all along we were told, you know, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Well, these people have been suffering with sewer water in their basement for many years. They're not going to fix that overnight. They're not going to fix that in the next four years by 2017. And if they are, I'd like to really know how they plan to do that. Um, as far as the water going in the river, that's been happening for a long time, too. And it needs to stop, no doubt about it. But this is another one of those runaway trains where we've got a city administration that keeps asking for more and more money. And now they're talking about, well, you know, we'll see lower rates, rates later. That's never going to happen, man. That's just like the county wheel tax we pay. That was supposed to be for a couple of years, and it's been there forever. These rates aren't going to go down. They may not have as big of an increase 10 years from now, but they're still going to have an increase. So let's stop with the joking. Let's stop with all the fancy glitter and glitz in these projects. And let's do what needs to be done, because right now, let's face it, money's still tight. The city claims they're tight on money. I know I'm tight on money, and so is probably every, every other person in this room. So let's do what needs to be done. Let's forget all the fancy stuff that doesn't need to be done right now and uh, get this problem solved. Thank you. My name is Samuel Brown. I represent Citizen United for a Better Government. And <laughs> definitely on that money issue. I just hope the council will really uh, take heed of this, see how much you go to cost us in the long run. And let's not just spend our money and threw it out to like we got a lot of money. I don't think uh, this is something that should just pass right away. We should just really do a lot of research into this. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara Jewell, 821 Gardner Avenue, South Bend. Actually, I'm going to stand on my tiptoes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Okay. There are actually... Uh, three questions I have. And first of all, I want to say that I think water is probably the most important thing we should be talking about because if you have <coughs> bad water, it's an extremely important um, medical problem that you have. So we all have to have clean water. However, there is one thing I would like to say. I know the bill was passed for the streets to be turned back into two-way streets. It's a huge, huge money problem that we have in South Bend. 
think too much money has been put into this. There are areas in this, uh, for the project that are very questionable. Could some of that money be put into the sewer project? Is that even possible that it could be uh, relocated for that? That's the first one. The second one is I was looking at the way the uh, interest was uh, presented to us uh, for uh, 2014. The interest was projected to be $3.64 per month. 2015, $3.96 uh, per month. 2016, $4.32 <coughs> per month. And 2017, $4.71 raised per month. And yet it was uh, $9, excuse me, 9% per year, or an average of $3.44 per month. It doesn't even make sense. $3.44 per month right away at, uh, for 2014. It's already projected to be three dollars and sixty-four cents per month. Doesn't even make sense. My last question is: What about the um, uh, areas out in the country that are still South Bend, for instance, Auten Road, that are in sewers? I know it was brought up, I believe, by you, Mr. Dieter. Are they the ones that are on? Um, excuse me, on um, septic tanks. Thank you. Are they going to be forced to go into sewers? I know some of the ones along that area have been forced to go into sewers. Is that how some of the money is now going to be gained, by forcing those people to go into sewers? That's a lot of money for each of those households to have to put in a sewer. And that's, that's a question that I would like to know. Um, I'm sure that those people out in those areas would like to know whether or not they have to um, pay those bills to have a sewer system put in. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Robert S. Reisky. I live at 51778 Old Mill Road in South Bend here. To start out with, the rates that they showed on the screen are different than the rates that we got through the mail. And I'd like to say, uh, you know, when you retire, you're more or less like on a fixed income. And to get a $80 water bill, it's, it's kind of ridiculous because, and I know that includes your trash and all the other stuff, but uh, the sewage alone was $45.70. Now, uh, if if you take in, uh, oh, by the way, too, I worked at the waterworks for, oh, that must have been 14, 15 years ago. And I'm not trying to point fingers or any at anybody, but there's a lot of money wasted. I think we should get somebody in there to, <coughs> to monitor the money that's going into these projects and uh, see all the money that's wasted. The other thing is, uh, in the summertime, I just moved back to South Bend two years ago. My first water bill was 600 and some dollars. And I try to explain to the people downtown that there, there must be some kind of mistake. They, downtown, they said it was, uh, uh, must be a leak uh, somewhere, and uh, that's what's causing the bill to be so high. Well, my sprinkling guy come out. He checked it out. The city, the water work come out and check the, the meter and everything. They put new meters in there. And I tried to explain to them, did you ever get something that's new and you got problems with it? Well, it so happened that the meter was messed up and they were char I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, finally, and they're threatening to charge me uh, delinquent fees and all the other things. But we finally got that straightened out. But the thing is, it's you know, it's ridiculous that you have to raise these rates so much when so many things are being wasted. Uh, you know, and like I said, uh, you know, $45.70, that's a good hunk of money for a retired person to be paying. And like I said, every water bill, and that must be like a standard rate. And the thing is, they're just my wife and I in the house. So it can't be that much sewage going down there, but $45.70 must be a standard rate. Is that right? 
I don't know. And uh, every time I go down to the waterworks, I want to strangle somebody because they, you can't, they don't want to understand anything. They don't want to get, you know, they don't want to take and say, you know, well, that could be our mistake. Everything is the customer, the customer. Well, it, every time I had the, the uh, meter people out there or the, the sprinkling company come out, there is no leaks. I don't know where all this water is going to, but I know we're not using it, and yet I'm still being charged for it. And I think, like in the summertime, my water bill is higher than my electric and my uh, gas bill combined. I mean, that's, to me, that's a little ridiculous. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chuck Curris. Um, I live at 51775 Villager Parkway in Granger. It's actually in Clay Township between uh, uh, Hickory and Ironwood, north of north of Cleveland, and we are on on the sewer. Um, I represent the Village of Farmington Homeowners Association. We don't have an official position on this. Uh, I can tell you that the general tenor is not favorable, <laughs> but we haven't taken an official position. We do have a request, though. Uh, right now, we if if there's a problem with the water line, and it has to be fixed, we're paying insurance for insurance to cover that. We don't have the same privilege with the sewer line. And if the rates are going to be raised, we think it's only fair that we also get access to the uh, sewer insurance. Mm. We're not sure how that process works. We've heard a couple of different stories. The one most recent one we got is that it requires an ordinance by the city council to include those areas outside of the boundaries of South Bend. Uh, it's our understanding that the inside the boundaries of South Bend that insurance is available. We would like to have that available because most of the people in the villas are retired and an assessment for a sewer repair would be very burdensome to them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone yeah. else wishing to yeah. speak? We ask that you come to the podium now. Seek your name and address, asked. please. Hello, my name is Dave Stickle. I live at 1308 Mishawak Avenue. I've heard a lot of talk all evening about money and about purification. And in the mayor's uh, report to the city, I heard the word green technologies, alternatives. I've also heard a lot about building more tanks, larger tanks, so on and so forth, storage. I know for a fact that methane capture is the future for alternative fuels. Now, there's been no alternatives offered. The only thing I've heard is building and money. I haven't heard, and I, maybe I've missed it, and maybe it's a part of the presentation where I, I did not see it. But I haven't seen any alternatives to uh, possibly add to this, this situation at all. The city allocated quite a bit of money, I understand to convert their cars and some of their vehicles to LP. <coughs> Methane capture can also be used for fuel. So I'm just sort of putting it as a question. I have seen no other, no other uh, presentation except the cost and need for purification. But over the top of all the purification systems, I'm just going to say for a layman's term, a tent. You can draw off of that. And some of that methane can be used in different areas. So I just asked the question, have any of those resources been considered in this equation? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Christopher Huff, 1831 College Street, South Bend. I'm neither speaking in favor nor in opposition at this point. I do have several questions which I do not believe were addressed at all during the presentations and I'd like to hear some answers to them. Number one, it was my understanding that we're only using 2007 net present value dollars to project 22 years into the future. Did I miss something along that line or are all the, all the costs in 22 years in, into the future up until the year 2029 based on 2007 costs. If that's the case, this is very, very disingenuous. Hopefully I'm wrong. Number two, the rate changes are to pay for money. Are these to be bonds? What type of bonds? Revenue, general obligation, hybrid? If they are bonds of some sort or another, 
what are the anticipated rates, the terms, and what are the basic tranches? How, how many bonds are we talking about here? It undoubtedly will not be just one. Uh, next, what is the percentage of the sewer rate payers that live outside the city but do not put out any stormwater into those sewers? Next, uh, what are the general areas of basement flooding? And based upon the, the money that we've already paid to begin this project, what percentage of those basements that have flooded in the past before uh, 2011 what is, what's the decline in the percentage of, of houses that uh, have flooding in their basements? Also, we're talking about 60 to 70 overflow events per year. Hopefully that, that number has declined over the last few years. What is the percentage decline in that, uh, in that, uh, that problem? And um, that's enough for now. Thank you very much. Thank you. The public hearing portion is now closed. We'll go back to the administration in terms of a rebuttal. I've listed a number of questions that uh, were posed, so I don't know at this time if the administration would want to come back for a five-minute rebuttal. Um, in terms of the questions that were asked, some of which uh, could, some of the funds that have been allocated for the two-way street, could some of this be used? Uh, to address uh, the issue that's before us. The interest rates um, that from 2014 until two 2017, the 9%, somehow um, the numbers <coughs> did not add up to that. The rates are different that were presented on the screen versus what was mail. Uh, is $45 or $47 a standard rate? Uh, the use of green tech and other alternative means and the 2007 net present dollars, as we look 20 years there out, what is the bond rate, what type, what type of bonds are being used? So there are a number of questions, so I don't know at what point what the administration would like to come back for a five-minute rebuttal. And there are four additional questions as well. Yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. I don't know if I've got you may not answer all of these, but you yeah. probably no, no, for sure. And there's okay. some that we can get you answers for. Mm -hmm. We don't. Um, the rates. Uh, I, I guess maybe if you want to start uh, asking them once, one at a time, I can. Okay, I'm just these are some of the that. questions I was trying to jot down. I don't know if uh, the clerk's office was able to garner some of these questions as well. The first question was, could some of the funds that have been allocated for the two-way streets, uh, could they be used for this project? Um, probably Keep legally, five um, I'm guessing they probably could. The, the idea here is to take care of a long-term control plan with um, sewer rates. And so our proposal is that we would use um, sewer rates and, and put the burden on the rate payers for uh, the increased fees. Second question was the 9% if you were to go back to that screen, looking at three dollars and sixty-four, three ninety-six. I don't think people really heard the first answer. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse me, they didn't really hear your first answer. Could you? Uh, could you? The microphone is a little too. Yeah, I, I think that. Um, Thank you. I don't, I don't know if there's any legal reason not. I mean, we could address that with the council. Yes. Councilman for Rick, I think the answer is it's about four and a half million dollars for two-way streets, the rest of the goes memorial, et cetera. So I'd have six hundred million dollars, four and a half million dollars, even if you took away the two-way streets, isn't going to make much difference. So it's probably a not a real um, important memorial. Okay, aspect. I'm going to ask that the, the conversation stay at the council level. Um, there are a number of questions. Again, I want the administration to have the five-minute rebuttal. Uh, I would recommend that the questions will be typed <coughs> up and given to the administration, and that these questions and the answers could be posted. But, but for the residents who are here at this time, you do have five minutes. Okay. And you can choose which questions you would like so, to respond um, to. The average, just on this slide, uh, just put a point of clarification. Um, she's right, those those four years would not average up to no. 344 mm -hmm. per month per year. That's the, the average over through 2029. That, so that when we gave you guys that rate sheet that showed all the years through 2029, 
if you take the average per year, that's 344 per year. That's, that's what I was trying to show there with that bullet. Um, the rates uh, in the bill, um, there's, there's a component that goes up on the meter and a component that goes up on the use. And um, the component on the meter went up $1.32. The component on the use went, I'm sorry, yeah, went up $2.32. So the combined was $3.64. So it does match what was uh, given to them in their, um, uh, that was sent to them in the mail. So those rates do match. It's just you got to figure out uh, how to calculate it based on um, what we're talking about. And those rates are based on an average user, which would be uh, 600 uh, CCF. Um, Access to sewer insurance is something we can take a look at. Uh, we do currently have water insurance allowed uh, for customers outside of okay. city limits. Um, we do uh, capture our methane, and we've got uh, digesters being rebuilt right now that the methane capture will be used to power our CNG vehicles. Uh, mm -hmm. That's about and then, Gentleman Kalsher had a number of good questions. We will have a series of bonds. Um, those bonds would be yearly. Um, those rates and terms would vary depending on the time. Uh, we would look at uh, uh, either doing a sewer bond or SRF bond, depending on what uh, conditions, whether conditions are favorable or not. Um, currently, we've got a really strong financial position, which puts us in a good position to get low rates on bonds. Um, and uh, uh, let's see, I, I don't have an answer on percent okay. based on flooding or, mm -hmm. or just percent decline overflows, but I can get those yeah. answers. And then the other last else. question before the one minute is up: the number of sewer rates players, I mean payers, who live outside of the city, and yeah, what I, percentage? I did provide that mm -hmm. for. Um, I believe it's 4,000 of our 40,000 customers. Or outside the city limits, about 10 percent. Okay. okay. I can verify that for you. We'll make sure that administration will get all the questions that were asked during the public hearing portion and would recommend that somehow these questions could be made available to the public so that they know that we have heard the questions and you can have the answers to those questions as well. Yeah. Could, it be put on, could it be put on our website? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the customer count by class inside mm -hmm. city limits is 36,476. Outside city, city limits <coughs> is 3,591. So mm -hmm. close to 10%, a little less. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Okay. The public hearing portion is now closed. We'll go down for <coughs> council comments and then would like to entertain a motion. I will start with Council Member Henry Davis. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, White. Um, and as I stated before, and this is why I asked the Mayor Bougie to be at these conversations. Obviously, these conversations get a bit intense, and it's not only because of your presence, but you also provide a role as a visionary for the city of South Bend and what happens next and what's going to happen next as planning takes place. And when we are able to have those conversations and match them up with what's happening now, mm -hmm. it gives the, the council as well as uh, hopefully your office as well to mm -hmm. uh, put things in the proper perspective of points or listen as priorities. Uh, it's not a way of taking attendance. It's just a way of having a progressive conversation that is uh, really not political that addresses the needs of the citizens of South Bend. Uh, based upon what we're looking at, it's almost looking like that water is becoming a commodity uh, here in South Bend. And what I mean by that is if you can look at some of the extreme cases uh, across the city, but I'm going to start with District 2, you have folks using water hoses from neighbors' houses to help put water inside their houses because clearly the water has been turned off somewhere and at some time. And if we go in with a rate increase, you're going to find a situation where that water will never get turned on, and you have people that probably will probably employ the water hose from next door, and you have here this situation with kids who never don't have water, running water in their houses. And how do they get it turned back on if they don't have any money? And then the rate has increased. Um, I was also provided a, 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 probably a bit of a solution. I don't necessarily know if this is a total solution. 
but having a tiered scale when we are dealing with larger consumers of water here in the city. Uh, we talked about that though, the court case some time ago and we kind of pulled back on it. I would think that the more you use, the more you should pay. You know, just because you use huge quantities, you shouldn't get just a huge discount because you use huge quantities. This is not Walmart. This is not Sam's Club. This is, you know, South Kenya. And so, I'm, I'm just really thinking about it. Um, you stated earlier 9.9% was the unemployment rate. I can go for that right now, but when you're talking about chronically unemployed, you're probably going to times this about two, and then if you go into minority community, you're probably going to times about three. And so you're going to be looking at a really a big situation to have and to have not. And to have not any water says a whole lot about a city. Uh, I was just looking earlier at uh, the poverty rate. It's like 60%. We have to really pay attention to what's going on with our, our residents. We're not a boutique society unless we're trying to put a plan together to push all the people who don't have out of the city and offer these spaces for people who do have a lot of money. I don't know if that is what South Bend is. Maybe that's the new South Bend that you talked about when we were uh, when, when you were being uh, during your uh, our swearing in ceremony. I'm not sure. I'm just really, really, you know, um, uh, um, disappointed that we are in a position right now that we're looking at people that we serve not having them used to water. It, it doesn't look good. Um, our senior citizens, I have a, a many of them in my district. I feel for them. Now they're probably will be literally choosing between medication or paying a water bill. That, that's not what we, are, what we should be doing. And I, I, I would hate to believe that we're going to be taxing people out of the city. I've heard that before. I didn't believe it. Never thought it would be true. But things like this, and, and just the lack of, uh, of, of, I guess, forwardness or progressive conversation and making sure that we are hitting every point available to make sure that this is being decreased is not being done. So I, I would probably offer to believe and say that we probably will be taxing people out of the city. They'll probably just be moving out. And that obviously is not good for bringing in new business. Um, I just have, you know, some real tough concerns. And, and the truth is, I don't think it's anyone's fault in here. I would never place the blame individually on anyone, but it's up to us to get it corrected. And I, and I charge your office with that. Obviously, the council, we're, we're, we're in tune to it. I just think that as a non-political issue, as a service issue, as our jobs, we really, really, really need to look at what's going on out here. And those numbers I just ran off, they're not getting corrected overnight. And as a matter of fact, they won't be getting corrected over the next two nights. So we have to pay attention, and we have to be very, very mindful of the population that we serve. Thank you. Council Member Shea? Uh, thank you, Chairwoman White. No questions. Council Member um, Furlow? Well, I, I don't think at 9% a year, even if it decreases after a while, it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. And I, we're all up here wanting to create jobs. And there's no company that's going to move in here that's water dependent that's going to pay those kind of water rates mm -hmm. when they can get them cheaper elsewhere. So if our job is to create jobs, uh, we've got a tough row ahead of us. So I think it's mandatory, like he said, Henry said, that we all get together and try to solve this. And I think we can. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Dieter? Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Again, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, I appreciate all the work that's gone into it, but there's even questions that have come up tonight from previous things or in some of the presentations, some of the numbers again. Uh, I, again, there's just a lot more information I think this entire council needs to have and digest. So hopefully with the questions that were answered or asked, and again, appreciate the citizens who came up with some very good things that I hadn't thought of before. So again, more information from citizens, more information from the council to get some questions answered would be greatly. Okay. Councilmember Varner? <coughs> I think we're beginning to have a discussion that could have been had eight years ago or 10 years ago or 12 years ago. If someone had thought, gee, it would be useful to have council members as part of this planning process. Um, I made that objection. I voiced that objection as long as 12 years ago because it was obvious the council was not part of it. Uh, no one thought it was important. Everyone apparently just decided that we can train the council to do what we want them to do by threatening them with large projects and fines. 
<clears throat> if a federal judge sends me a written order and says I have to agree to this, and I'll agree to it. But I don't think it has to get that far. I think people just have to take it upon themselves to find a way to do this. If it's a new technology, it's new technology. Um, when you have a rate and a time and an interest factor, and you can't, our, 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 our dollar costs are so much greater than everybody else, then we either have to have some sort of rate break or we have to have some sort of time break. And if it's a 50-year project, if it's a 50-year infrastructure improvement, financing it in 20 years with cash and financing just doesn't make sense for the current rate payers. So I'm not sure whether it's financing, I'm not sure whether it's construction projects, I'm not sure whether it's just the plan in general. And I think we definitely need more information <coughs> on this, this, uh, this Michigan deal because if we're doing something on the basis of the results of a faulty model, um, it's very expensive, which amounts apparently to treating any of this outflow. Uh, I think we do a tremendous disservice to the community, to saddle the people in this community with exorbitant rates, an extraordinary construction project when some of it isn't necessary. So I, I, I will bring forth, first of all, a resolution next week, which I, or next month, which I think so states this. And when we're through, I would make the recommendation uh, that there has to be an increase. I would suggest Won't you hold that until okay. each right. council person. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, you. Council Member right. Davis. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, Chairwoman. All right, um, two things. One, um, I look forward to receiving um, since the first penny has been sent, I mean spent with this project, the decline list that was mentioned by I think Chris back there in the back, in the sense that um, since we had the rate rates of 30 percent in the past and the other rates that the council um, voted for over the past years, um, and all that money has gone into different projects from day one to now, um, what has been the progress regarding um, the homes across this whole entire area that has uh, that are no longer on the list of um, having any problems with sewer. I like to look at that and see um, how our money in the past has been invested. Um, I close with this. Um, there was a mention regarding punting that we shouldn't punt. Um, I like football and um, a good coach knows that punting um, is not a bad thing when you have proper clock management. Punting um, sometimes, and going for fourth down and ten when you are in the wrong um, sideline is not courage. It's an act that should cause people to consider to be removed. And um, I appreciate watching coaches when they have the ball in a very dangerous position, when they have good clock management, pump the ball to give their offense or defense more time to think things through, and then come back out with proper clock management and get their offense and score. If some of my favorite teams had done that, we probably would have won this past weekend. <laughs> but um, that didn't happen. And so, therefore, I, I, we talked earlier this afternoon about um, three months, six months down, looking at things we heard tonight that we will even hear possible better numbers a year from now. That's not a lack of courage. That um, could be um, punting the ball into a precise location where you have a better chance to win. And we all want to win. The administration, the council, Crow, all your people over there want to win. And so, therefore, I really think that we need to value um, what it means to have a good punter on the team and punt and make sure that we punt it in the right location, give us some time to bring the offense back out, and then let's come back and win the game. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Crow. At this time, um, would like to entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to continue this to January 27th of 2014. Second. Wait, that's a motion. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I would request that any motion 
That's what I said. Go back Second. to the utilities committee. Second. Second. Okay. We have it. a motion has been made. It's been seconded. I have one question on that motion. Okay. Um, how does that relate to um, Dr. Varner's resolution that he's planning to bring? He's still bringing that for. Okay. He's still okay. Yeah. He's still bringing that. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. There's a motion on the table and on the floor. It's been seconded. All those in favor of the motion, may I hear your vote? Aye. Uh, those opposed, the motion carries. This bill will be continued in the council portion only until January, what was that date again? 27. We'll give second reading to Bill 66-13. Wow, all the hearing on Bill 27. What church is Mm -hmm. Is there a committee report? Personnel and finance? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Personnel and finance had a uh, committee meeting this afternoon on uh, Bill 6613 that comes to council with a favorable recommendation. Is there a presenter? Yes, there is. Thank you. Councilmember White, Mark Neal, City Controller, offices on the 12th floor of this building. Uh, board in, uh, bill number 6613 is brought before you to uh, reinstate a floating holiday as noted in the, uh, the title. The city currently has 10 paid holidays. We are looking to continue that. Currently there are 10 fixed holidays. Uh, and uh, in, in recent times, I think some council members may recall that we have historically had a floating holiday in which employees may select a date. Uh, we'd like to re-implement that floating holiday uh, so that we can maintain city uh, offices to be open on one additional day during the year to serve citizens, but at the same time still provide for 10 holidays for our employees. Uh, the, uh, in order to do that, we need to remove one of the currently fixed holidays, which is Good Friday. We selected that as we were looking at which holidays are not, not currently federal holidays, and which holidays, if, uh, if uh, removed, would not pose an undue burden in terms of citizen and taxpayer cost to reopen the city. So consequently, uh, we identified Good Friday as being the uh, best candidate to do that. So we would ask for the council's favorable recommendation to re-implement re re a floating holiday, but still retain 10 paid holidays a year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Council members, any questions regarding Bill 66-13? Seeing that we move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support <coughs> of Bill 66-13? Seeing no one, is there anyone present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing portion is not. I'll uh, move for a favorable recommendation. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, may I hear your vote? Aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 66-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Mr. Board, you please the second reading to Bill 60-13. Is there a committee report? Councilmember Davis? Yes, uh, the park committee met this afternoon. We sent Bill 6013 to the council. <laughs> <laughs> Senator 6013 to the Council for Favorable Recommendation. Thank you. We do have a presenter. State your name and address, please. Dennis Andres, Executive Director, Morris Center, um, 211, 211 on North Michigan Street, South Bend, Indiana. I appear before you this evening seeking your approval for an appropriation of $21,000 from within the Palais Royale Historic Preservation Fund, that is Fund 450. Fund 450 receives or generates its capital from a 2% surcharge assessed on all services provided in connection with the use and rental of the Palais Royale uh, facility. No general city funds are needed. Uh, the $21,000 will be used to repair the historic stonework on the exterior of the Palais Royale, uh, to reseal areas around the existing windows, and to repair a room that was damaged due to water leaks because of those needs. Thank you. Council members, do you have any questions of the petitioner? Negative. Thank you. Yeah. At this time, we move to the public hearing portion. Is there anyone present wishing to speak in support of Bill 60-13? Seeing no one, is there anyone 
present wishing to speak in opposition? Again, I see no one. The public hearing is now closed. Move for favor of recommendation. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion, I hear you call uh, uh, Those opposed, the motion carries. Bill 60-13 will be sent to the full council with a favorable recommendation. I now would like to entertain a motion Second. to rise from the Committee of the Whole and report that to the full council. So, so, second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the motion? Uh, uh, those opposed, uh, the motion carries. Full council is now in session. Clerk yeah. 40, third reading of 6613. Second. Motion to second, Clerk Forty. Mm -hmm. Henry Davis. Aye. Mr. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furman. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furman. Aye. President Davis. Aye. Thank you. 6013. Third reading on the bill of the Town Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating $100,000 for the Historic Preservation Fund from for repairs the historic exterior of the venue. Move for the passage of 6013. Second. We have a motion. We have a second on that. Clerk Board, you go ahead and read that roll. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furley. Aye. Dr. Barnard. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. Mr. Furley. Aye. Mr. Shea. 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 Aye. Mr. Shea.
y muchas gracias. Thank you. Committee report. Uh, the Community Investment Committee met today and we send 1376 to the full council with no recommendation. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Attorney, I don't believe we received a call from the petitioners for 40. Okay. So moved. Second. And then there will be a note or a call made. Okay. Thank you. We have motion to continue this December 9th. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. May I have a motion to continue 1377 indefinitely? So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Any opposition to that? Thank you very much. 1378. A resolution of the Council of the City of South Bend to certain areas within the City of South Bend, Indiana, known as 215 North on Sycamore Street. And this is on a revitalization area for the purpose of a five-year real property tax abatement for each day. Oh, Thank you. Committee report. Uh, community investment sends 1378 to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Petitioner with a short synopsis of your project. Uh, five story mixed use building, 16,000 square feet, uh, four one bedroom, four two bedroom, and four three bedroom condo like apartments. That was good, but we need your name and address oh, for the sorry, record. Dave Matthews, <laughs> 215 <laughs> East Colfax <laughs> Avenue, South India. Okay. Thank you very much. Anyone like to speak in favor of this? Okay. Or opposition? Council recommendation. Move for the adoption of 1378. Second. Motion to second. Clerk Gordy. Vice President Howard. Aye. Council Member White. Aye. Mr. Furlick. Aye. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shea. Aye. Dr. Furlick. Aye. Dr. Barber. Aye. President Aye. Thank you. 1379. Thank you. Committee report. Uh, the Community Investment Committee sends 1379 to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Good evening, council. Thank you for your time. Um, my name is Kyle Bach. Office is at 911 Main Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I'm excited, brief, I'll keep it really brief, but I'm excited to uh, be presenting this proposal today, being the fact that I grew up in River Park neighborhood. Okay. After uh, leaving Nooner, I went to uh, Washington High School. So. By the west side, we're Tom sorry, Davis. <laughs> uh, we are here today presenting a seven and a half uh, million total in dollar investment into the community. Uh, excited about the opportunity of uh, providing uh, off-campus student housing facilities for um, students of Indiana University South Bend and anybody else that wants to partake in our facility. So I thank you for your um, for your time, and I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, sir. Anyone would like to speak in favor of this or opposition? Council. Move for the adoption of 1613. 1379. 1379. Second. Yeah, Motion whatever. Second for 1379. Aye. 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 Uh, aye. And too bad all your receiving records were broken, too. Cleared <laughs> 40. Could have seen the fight song. 1380. <laughs> Resolution of the County Council of the City of South Bend, designated in the city of South Bend, Indiana, commonly known as 
Committee report. The Community Investment Committee sends 1380 forward with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Petitioner. Jeff McGowan, uh, taxpayer representative for Denby Enterprises, Frugal Lawton at uh, 210 South Michigan Street in South Bend. Uh, quickly, uh, Denby Enterprises uh, would request a, an abatement for $1.8 million uh, to rehabilitate and improve a cold storage warehouse facility that is leased to Plum Rose USA a bacon and meat processor manufacturer. Denby Enterprises did have a substantial fire loss in November 2012 uh, and as a result of the fire loss did have to pull a fire permit but no permit has been pulled in regards to the uh, 1.8 million dollar uh, projected cost of the rehabilitation. Uh, I do have one uh, re report error or something that I'd like to fix. Is that something I give to you or just say now? Okay. On page two of the uh, tax abatement report, it states that the petitioner intends to uh, basically return the building to its use and the uh, abatement request is for not just a return, but it is a much, it's an improvement. One that utilizes uh, hot air technology with uh, significant water savings. And sewer. <laughs> Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> uh, also would like to make a correction uh, as far as the employment numbers. Uh, I don't know if it was clear in there, but uh, under the employment impact, the uh, current Plum Rose will ring t uh, retain the 23 existing full-time positions with 890,000 of a uh, annual payroll and the addition of two additional jobs which will add 67,000 to that payroll. Uh, they are seeking a seven-year tax abatement for this real property. During the abatement period, they will pay uh, $297,000, and of which the abatement amount will be $161,000. I have with me the uh, co-managing members of Denby Enterprises, of the Annette Denby Trust, uh, Ben Silver and Joshua Silver, if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Real quick question, and I don't know if you can answer this or the managing partners. I just really see this as being a great opportunity for South Bend. Uh, we always talk about jobs, and we never say good jobs. I think this is like a good job, a good employer for good jobs. They're manufacturing based, low scale, some you know mid grade scale. They play pretty good wages as well. Uh, so these are the things that I think that we need to really be concentrating on here in the city. Uh, so if people are employed at a level they can take care of a house, household, or a mortgage, or both. And, and my question right now, I, I guess Mark Neal, uh, or even Oliver Davis, because this is in your area as well, um, the ongoing conversations about expansion or helping uh, to support expansion of businesses like this would probably be one of our better ways of getting more jobs here that are sustainable than what we think that we're doing with these new restaurants and all these other stuff. Not to say they don't deserve a place. But these places will employ people that will go eat at those restaurants. So, you know, it's one of those deals. So, uh, thank you uh, for the investment. But I think the conversation needs to happen. Uh, council member administration with folks like that to see how we can help, expand, help them expand. Okay, thank you. Anyone like to speak in favor of this? Or opposition? Council. Do we have a move for adoption? We have a second. Yeah, second. Welcome to. Okay, Kirk Forty. Uh, Mr. Froelich. Aye. Uh, Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mr. Mark Neal. Aye. Mr. Oliver Davis. Aye. Mr. Burns. Aye. Mr. Burns. Aye. Vice President Davis. Aye. I'm glad to have you in the sixth district. Council Member White. Aye. 
Thank you. Yeah. 1383. A resolution of the County Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana to appoint the Board of Public Works and Department of Public Works as its agents for overseeing the guaranteed energy savings contract for Century Center. Committee report. Uh, yes, President Dieter. On the part of me, uh, this afternoon, we send Bill 1383 with a favor recommendation to the full council. Right. Presenter. I guess I'll be presenting. There's no one from administration that was here from earlier. Obviously, it came to the Park Department. Oh. Mark Neal. Mark, Mark Neal. Mark Neal. Right. Hey, there you go. There you go. No, Jonathan Mark presented earlier, and so I didn't. How are you doing? Good to see you. Mark, you got Oh, thank you. Uh, Good evening, council members and Carol Nash uh, from the uh, city legal department. You can move the mic floor. now. On the 12th floor of this building. Thanks. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, we, we have a little debate among ourselves of who, who might be presenting this, but uh, I appreciate that uh, Mr. Davis was actually the person who uh, helped usher this through, and I think. Um, uh, Council Attorney uh, uh, Farrand also was the person who, who helped with this so much. Um, as the Council is probably well aware, the uh, Century Center Board of Managers ultimately hopes to enter into an, a guaranteed energy savings contract for that and it wants to do adequate research and obtain as much information as possible from potential contractors. And so uh, our office has been working with uh, Jonathan Burke from the uh, Public Works and with uh, Scott Hersig and other people in order to uh, prepare a uh, request for qualifications. And as part of the process, the um, actually the most important part of the process is that the council will ultimately need to enter into the guaranteed energy con savings contract on behalf of Century Center Board of Managers. And this resolution is to allow the Board of Public Works to do the uh, working out of that uh, contract and uh, to do that on behalf of the Common Council. If there are any other questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. But we also have Scott Hersick and Leanna Bellew here from the uh, Century Center. And of course, Councilmember Davis is familiar with this as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, anyone like to speak in favor of this? Or opposition? Move, Seeing none, Council. Move for adoption of 1383. Second. A motion to second. Clerk Vorty. Mr. Henry Davis. Aye. Mrs. Shedd. Aye. Dr. Turner. Uh, aye. Dr. Barnard? Aye. Aye. Uh, I don't know what these folks are doing. Aye. 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 Thank you. Make a motion to send us public works and property to 12 9 13. So moved. Second. A motion to second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Any opposition to that? See you guys. Um, 68 13. First reading on the bill of the County Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending Chapter 9, Article 5 of the South Bend Municipal Code, addressing hazardous mm -hmm. materials and tactical rescue team. Was it 6813? The Health and Public Safety Committee be sent to second, third reading, and public hearing on three times. Smart. Yep. Second. It's a motion. We have a second by Karen White. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. 6913. First reading on the bill of the County Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending various sections within Chapter 4, Article 4 of the South Bend Municipal Code, requiring electronic reporting of transactions by precious metal dealers regulated in Section 4 44 by scrap metal dealers, junk dealers, valuable metal dealers, and recycling operations regulated by Section 4 51 and by second-hand store regulated in 4-53. Make a motion to send us to Health and Public Safety for 12 9 -13. So move. Second. Second. Motion to the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? 7-D-13. 
First reading on the bill of the town council of the city of South Bend, Indiana, the town of the city of South Bend, Indiana, the city of the city of South Bend, by the inclusion of the section 16.1 city residency requirements. Move that 7013 Central Personnel and Finance Committee be set for second, third reading, and public hearing on 113. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. 7113. First reading on the bill of the Town Council of the City of South We're leaving this. Appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and city service operations in 2013 of $90,000 from Parks and Recreation <laughs> Fund number 201. $16 from the Department of Community Investment Grant Fund, number 213, $675,000 from liabilities and the premium and reserve fund, number 226, $750,000 from Ross Recovery Fund, number 227, $37,378 from Human Rights Grant Fund, number 258, $30,000 from the Development Revenue Fund, number 281, $450,000 from the UNS Capital Improvement Fund, number 288, $475,000 from the County Outcome Income Tax Plan, number 404, $700,000 from self-funded employee benefits, number 711. Move the 7113 be sent to Personnel and Finance Committee, be set for second, third reading, and public hearing on 12 9. Second. Okay. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. 7213. First reading on the bill, the County Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, appropriating additional funds for certain departmental and enterprise operations in 2013 of $294,000 Motion is second. All in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? 7313, please. Move that 7313 be sent to Personnel and Finance Committee be set for second, third reading, and public hearing on 12 9. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? 7413, please. First reading on the bill of the town council of the city of South Bend, Indiana, amending the 2013 salary ordinance number 10199-12 for appointed officers and non-bargaining employees at the city of South Bend, Indiana, to address certain zoo employee compensation. Well, the 7413 be sent to personnel and finance be set for second, third reading and public hearing on 12-9. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. 7513. Reading on the bill of the city of South Bend, Indiana, amending 2014 salary ordinance number 10266-13 for appointed officers and non-bargaining employees of the city of South Bend. 7513, Senate Personnel Finance Committee, second, third reading, and public hearing on 12-9. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? 7613. First reading on the bill of the Common Council of the City of South Bend, Indiana, amending the legal description and maps within ordinance number 10165-12 to expand the boundaries of the existing riverfront development project area on the Indiana Coast 7.1-3-20-20. Oh, move to 7613, the community investment uh, for. Uh, second and third reading on December 9th. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Thank you. 7713. First reading on the bill establishing responsible bidder requirements of public works projects. Would the 7713 be sent to uh, the works of property, property vacation set for second, third reading in public hearing on 113 13? 14. 14. 14. 14. 1 plus 13 is 14. Second in that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Unfinished business. I make a motion to send 1381 and 1382 to ZNA for 12 9 13. So moved. Yeah, second. second. There's a motion to second. All in favor of that? Aye. Any opposition to that? I'd like to make a motion to send Bill 6113 and 6213 to ZNA for 113 of 14. So moved. Second. There's a motion to second. All in favor of that? Aye. Any opposition to that? Any new business before this council? Yeah. I got one. Question. Um, I don't know who it's supposed to. Oh, I got an email today. I think we all were just saying, you know, and I engaged that person in the email because there was so much against the yard waste issue. But what came out of that conversation was about the smart truck uh, initiative that the city put through for the yard waste. Mm -hmm. Question at this point is that how many people are willing to be losing their jobs uh, because of the new trucks coming in and not needing necessarily all the folks or the same folks on the same work crews? Or will it be the same folks being employed uh, with the new trucks? And so I don't know if you can answer that question, Mark Neal, at a later date or better time, email, what have you, so Kathy Bruce, it doesn't matter. I actually wasn't copied on that email, so you can work that together. But I'm, well, I'm asking you the question right now at this point, so you don't need to be copying the email. The question is being asked is that smart truck initiative that's put through. Is it going to increase the amount of folks that work for it, uh, solid waste, or will it keep it the same, or will it increase? Okay. Are you referring to the new trucks that have been ordered that are Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'd have to uh, check with uh, Airport Office and Director of Public Works. Let's go for it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Privilege of the floor. Anyone that wants to talk to the council this time about something we didn't speak about in the last 15 minutes? Anyone that wants to talk to the council this time about something we didn't speak about in the last two hours and 21 minutes, you may do so. We need your name and address. If there's something specific you want us to follow up, I think there's forms on that table. Fill it out, and we will get it to the appropriate committee chair. You will have up to three minutes, and Gavin Furlick, we use the Casio, we time you tonight. Christopher Huff, 1831 College Street. Nice to see you again. This past summer, <clears throat> this council uh, considered a special use permit uh, change in order to uh, allow the establishment of gasoline pumps at a, an existing convenience store on West Western Avenue. I happen to be here, over, and not here specifically mm -hmm. for that, but I oversaw, uh, oversaw that, that entire process. It appeared to me that it went on for at least a month and a half here before the council. Okay, that's fine. I'm not up here criticizing the decision. That's between basically the neighbors and the council and certainly the, the mayor. What I am up here to talk about for a moment is the way it was presented. I've been a practicing planner since February 1st, 1977. And ladies and gentlemen, the 13 years that I spent in Mishawaka, if I heard this once, I heard it 10,000 times. And, that, and it basically boils down to this that until the idiots in the county city building are gone, they would never develop, they would never invest, they would never do anything within the city of South Bend. For years, I ignored that, I thought it was ridiculous, until I saw what happened this past summer. This is stuck in my throat here for, for several months now. And it boils down to this. When you've got professional staff that we pay for on the 11th floor coming and making a recommendation to this council, which they're paid to do. And it was in the affirmative. And then at the last hour, essentially the 11th hour, a month and a half later, you've got that same planning organization making recommendation to the council, affirmative. And then literally the last person to make comment on that issue at this very <laughs> lectern right here, another one of our paid staff members from the 11th floor, but unfortunately or fortunately or whatever, happened to be in a different organizational office. 
which was counter, which was completely the opposite of what had been recommended before. I've never seen a more, I've never seen a better example of bad public management in my entire life. This does nothing more than indicate to me that those people who made those statements to me for years were right. Because nobody knows who's, who's on first, second, or third. Yes, 30 seconds, sir. Okay. I bring this to your attention. I think you know what the situation is. I mentioned it to the mayor when I, when I had his ear a few minutes ago. This has got to change. This has got to change. That was the most egregious example I've ever seen. Any staff member of mine before would have been booted for doing anything like that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Samuel Brown, representing Citizen United for Better Government. Um, 1976, P.O. Box, I've been in Indiana. And I'd just like to say to the council, keep working. <laughs> You're doing a good job. When the 14th floor don't agree with something, they come up with all kinds of excuses. Because you guys are doing a good job. You're reading and writing, you're looking at numbers, you're paying attention. You're looking out for the public. I don't feel it's right that the 14th floor got to beat up on a council member when something don't go right. They have to find an excuse, a motive, why it's happening. Uh, this article here and these, all these articles, I put them in a booklet. When you're not doing your job, it's going to come back and haunt you, either now or later, and that's the truth. The public will have the final say. Barack Obama came in, everybody didn't like him. They re-elected him. Somebody re-elected him. And it's the same way it's going to be in South Bay. The voters are going to have the final say. Keep working hard. Hey, thank you, sir. Jesse Davis, P.O. Box 10205 South Bend, Indiana. I do have a privilege of the floor, and uh, this does have something to do with sewers, but not necessarily the CSOs. Um, we apparently are also re restructuring or remanufacturing manholes in South Bend. So I brought some pictures of one in particular. Um, I had saw debris sitting out in the middle of this intersection for almost two weeks. And then along comes a city truck and cleans the debris up after this company did this work on this manhole. That was back in on October 23rd of 2013 is the date on this photograph. Um, the manhole was at the corner of Fellows and Bronson Street in the intersection. That's what this picture depicts for you. This photo is dated 1121 of 2013, so not quite a couple days shy of a month later. Then I received a phone call from a, a friend of mine two nights ago who got a flat tire in that general area. And when I went to go help them out, they were about a block and a half down the street, you know, before they had stopped. And he couldn't figure out why he had a flat tire. He had fairly new tires. There was a big gouge in his rim. So we got him back on the road. I went back during daylight hours and looked around to see what was going on. Well, the same manhole that the city apparently spent $4,000 or more to have resurfaced by this company has totally settled from poor workmanship. So you've got now a six inch uh, cast iron rise for this ring and lid that's sticking up that every car that drives through that intersection is running over, sure. causing damage to the front end, so on and so forth. If this isn't the kind of poor workmanship that we're getting from companies that we're dishing out millions of dollars a year's worth of work to, this is ridiculous. This is why we have a lot of money problems, because we have to continue to go back and redo the work that should have been done right the first time. This is less than 30 days old, and there's no reason people should be damaging their cars on this. I'd like you guys to look into this, look into the company that's doing this work, <laughs> See how many complaints have been out there. What kind of dollars we're paying this company to do this substandard work? Okay, thank you. This council is adjourned. Oh,